Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. This is section 5.7, but before you watch this video, I strongly encourage you to review 3.6. 3.6 deals with converting decimals to percents, percents to fractions, and fractions to percent, and vice versa. You need to be able to go both ways. So definitely watch that video. Practice that. Be comfortable with the conversion of decimals to percents and the definition of what a percent actually is. So let's look at an example. If we're comfortable with that conversion, <coughs> we're, the first thing we're going to define is what is a percent and how do we use it? Well, this formula here basically says a rate times a base equals the amount. And we use rates as a term to represent a percent at times. Um, and you can see I translated r times b equals a to be rate times the base equals the amount. Here's our example. We have five students that are absent from class. If this is 25% of the class, find the total number of students in the class. Now, to do that, if we're comfortable converting percents to fractions or to decimals, we know that in order to use a percent, we have to write it as a number. This is per 100. So maybe we'd write it as 0.25. So 25% is 0.25. This would be the number we're going to use. This is the given information when we read this the second time. 25% is 0.25. Or maybe we also recognize this as a quarter. Maybe we want to convert this as 25 over 100 and reduce it. 25 per cent or per 100 is a quarter. So if we're comfortable with that conversion, maybe we're comfortable with this fraction because we deal with quarters all the time. We're just dividing by 4. So let's translate this now into an algebraic expression. Five students are absent from class. If this is 25% of the class, well, basically when we translate that, 5 is 25% or 1 quarter of tells me to multiply the class. And I'm going to use the variable c because that's the class. We just translated this into an algebraic expression. And now we can solve it. Well, <clears throat> to get rid of this fraction, I can multiply by its reciprocal. Its reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So if I multiply this by 4, I can multiply this by 4. 4 times 1 fourth is just 1, right? The 4's would reduce to 1. One of these c's, or the number of students in the class, is 4 times 5, which is 20. 20 students. And then we can check our work. Is 5, of, or five out of 20 students 25%? And if we do this, we will get, if we actually did the division, carried it out to a de decimal, we'd get 0.25 which we know is, or excuse me, yeah, is 25%. All right, let's look at another real world example where we might use a rate times a base equals an amount. When you buy a home, the bank often requires a 20% of the cost for a down payment. If you buy a $120,000 house, how much do you have to have up front? How much is the down payment? So we have to determine what is our rate, what is our base, and what is the amount. Well, <clears throat> we know our rate. That's our percent, given as a percent, of the cost. So if I take this times the cost, I will know the amount I have to pay the bank. So my rate is 20%. So I converted that to a decimal of the cost, which we're told the house is 120,000, that's the cost of the house, that will be my down payment. And I'm going to use the variable d. How much is the down payment? We can now solve for it. Now, I could multiply this, or because I'm comfortable with percents and they make my life so much easier at times, I recognize 20% as 1 fifth. So I convert my percent to a decimal, 20 over 100 reduces to 1 fifth times 120,000 
equals the down payment. Well, essentially, if I want to do this math, I just have to divide this by 5. 120,000 divided by 5. And we'll do it this way. 5 goes into 12 twice with a remainder of 2. 5 goes into 20 four times with no remainder. And it goes into 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, and 0 times. Now, because it is an application problem, we have to read it again and say, does this answer the question? How much is the down payment? 24,000 what? Units are important here. So $24,000 would be the amount of money I would have to provide to the bank in order for them to loan me this much money to purchase this house. So that's a real world example. Now we're going to look at a few definitions and even a few formulas that maybe we might be able to utilize uh, when we're working with applications that deal with percents. So the first term I'm going to uh, define as discount. It is a reduction of price. And it's something we come across very often. Uh, let's say we go to a store and they have a sale. And they say, oh, 20% off. That is your discount when you purchase that. A formula that can be used to calculate sale price, which is the cost after a discount, I use several variables here. The price minus the discounted price. Now, the discounted price, reduction of price, we're going to subtract it. The rate or percent times the price. So we're going to subtract the percent times the price. And once we find this difference, we will know the cost, how much we actually have to pay. Uh, sometimes we have to pay sales tax. Well, that's a tax on goods by governments, whether it's city, state, or federal. We're always going to pay taxes. And they are generally represented as a percent. And when we have to pay a tax, that is an additional cost. So I also decided to define markup. Markup is an increase of price. Well, a tax increases the cost that you have to pay. So it is an increase of price. So whether you're calculating a markup or sales tax, you can actually use the same formula. Where we have an initial price, and we're going to pay a tax, or we're going to pay a markup. This, the i, I let indicate the increase which is our rate, our percent, times that price. And if we add the two together, we'll have the cost, what I have to pay out. An example of that, you go to the grocery store, and you have to pay something that costs you know, $100. Well, if you have 6% sales tax, 6% of $100 would be $6. My cost is going to be $100, the price, plus the increase of $6 to get a total of $106 after paying that tax. All right, and then the last term we're going to define here is commission. Many times when we uh, purchase something, we have to go through a, a service, and uh, we have to pay them a fee for the service they provide. And that's called commission. And it's a, defined as a fee paid for a service rendered. So let's see how we can tie some of these concepts together in an application. And again, I feel that this is a very real world application, because many of us have aspirations to maybe purchase a house at some point. And this is many of the costs that are incurred in buying or selling a house. In this case, we're going to be selling a house. And it says, a real estate agent's commission is 6.5%. Well, commission is a percentage times the total amount. The closing costs, and this is fees that you might have to pay to the bank or some other uh, fees that might be associated. So that's just a number. And in this case, it's $1,300. Maybe you still owe the bank some money on that mortgage. And in this case, it's $129,300. And after you sell the house and you pay the real estate agent, and you pay your closing costs, and you pay the balance of your mortgage, you end up receiving $37,700. That's more than enough for that 20% down payment on the previous example. We want to know what you actually sold the house for. What was the selling price of the home if you received $37,700 after all these costs? So let's think. Our variable is the selling price of the house. We're, I'm going to call that x. Out of this amount that I sell the house for, I have to pay the real estate agent that commission. And that commission, 
of 6.5%, we have to convert to a number, so 0 0.065, of the cost of the house. Then we, we have to pay out of this amount. We have to pay the closing cost. So I have to subtract another 1,300. And then I have to pay the bank the balance of the loan. And when it's all said and done, I will have received 37,700. So I put equals here because I will receive this much after I pay the mortgage, the closing costs, and the commission to the selling agent or the real estate agent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you at this point because you should be familiar with working with decimals and variables and solving linear equations. And I will tell you the answer so you can check your work and make sure you uh, came to the right answer. But hopefully, the key to this is knowing how to set it up is to relate. These are costs, and this is what I'm receiving to build your equation. And the answer you should get when you calculate through this to solve that variable is $180,000. That is the selling price of the home. So <clears throat> review it. Make sure you understand why these are being subtracted and why we have it equal to 37,300. Work it through, and hopefully you'll get that answer. Thank you for watching.